Good morning, Rockland State Young Men's Presidency. Uh, I was asked to make a video um, kind of about how we can allow the missionary work during this time to continue to progress. Um, I guess I was invited to do so um, to answer these questions because I recently got back from my mission about, I got back July 10th, so about a month and a half ago. Um, and so just to start off answering the questions, the first one is like, how can we gather Israel through our own personal missionary efforts? And to answer that question, um, I guess m like missionary work through the members was always one of those things where it was kind of hard to do because you sometimes like our mission president, um, he taught us there's like three different kinds of members. There's like those members who are like, are super willing to like, have like investigators over at their houses to teach them the lessons to have daily contact with them then there's this kind of members that are willing to have you over um and like they'll always be willing to just like feed you but they aren't like super involved and other times there's members who kind of just acknowledge that you're there <laughs> um and so it was hard whenever you got to a new area you had to kind of get a feel for where those members were at which one of those three categories they fell in and maybe it's not fair to categorize them specifically in one area you know people grow and change um, but I guess like being someone who wants to be someone in that first category, um, like always helping the missionaries, I think it comes down to us just like constantly like sharing the gospel with people, um, in ways other than just bearing testimony all the time. So I think that's important that we live the gospel of course there's a quote from it was like a protestant minister way back when that said like we must always be preaching the gospel and if necessary open our mouths to do it and i think that's something that's just really true and as well i guess this goes along kind of with um the second question like how can we modify our efforts with all the social distancing going on we need to really use the book of mormon elder legrand richards taught that the most underused tool in missionary work is the book of mormon and that's pretty crazy because that's the central message everything is upheld by the book of mormon Joseph Smith thought that it was the keystone of our religion, yet it still is underused. Like, if I could redo my mission, I would do two things. Testify of the Book of Mormon more and use it in every single lesson, no matter what it was. Always find a way, because the Book of Mormon is the most powerful book in the world. And people will feel the spirit from it if missionaries and members are committed to, to sharing it with other people. Um, and I think it comes down to just being bold. I think oftentimes as a missionary, even as a missionary, even though you're set apart, you know, you've been endowed in the temple, sometimes you're still hesitant because, you know, you might have reservations like, oh, I don't want to like, feel like I'm forcing religion on people. But when it comes down to it, like, it's the truth. Um, and of course, we need to be respectful of people's agency and people's beliefs. Um, but, you know, Jesus Christ is a very bold person. And if we were to be like Jesus Christ, we must live after his example as well. Um, and I guess going on with examples to answer the third question, examples of um, kind of things that go along with the first two questions. Um, there were many times where we received referrals in our missions from people who either were found through um, the Salt Lake Temple missionaries um, who had heard about the church and they went to Temple Square, they checked it out, they talked with some of the sisters there and then we got referrals for them. I actually heard there were several people in our mission who got baptized from like the London Temple referrals or from the Salt Lake City Temple referrals. So it was pretty cool to see that actually work. Um, as well, we received a lot of referrals from people who just wanted to know more about God. Um, so like my last three months of my mission, we were stuck in the apartment. And like the first week I was just like, I kind of just wiped my hands off a of missionary. I was like, this is useless. There's no way we're gonna find people. And like those three months were the hardest months of my mission, but also the most special because we found probably the most people to teach, the most people who are willing to read and pray about the Book of Mormon. And I found more people who were able to discover the truth about the Book of Mormon than possibly every other of my areas combined. And so I think that's just a testament to that the coronavirus isn't a hindrance to the missionary work, but rather it's an opening to us to be able to figure out new ways and more effective ways to share the gospel. Um, and going back to the Book of Mormon, I think it all comes down to that. Using social media to just post little pictures, videos, whatever it may be. Um, but I know my videos only be five minutes long, so I won't ramble on forever, um, even though I know I could do that. Um, but yeah, just want to leave these things with you guys in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hi, I'm Sister Bradshaw. I'm currently serving here in the Rockland First and Fifth Wards, and I want to share a personal experience with you guys about gathering Israel before I came out as a missionary. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we can do to gather Israel through our own personal missionary efforts is to invite. And I cannot stress this enough, you guys. That's all that Jesus Christ did when he was here on this earth. He invited people. He said, come, follow me. And it was left up to them if they wanted to do it. But he always, always invited. And for us to make a decision for somebody else to say, mm, yeah, they're interested or mm, no, they're not interested by not inviting them, that's a pretty big assumption to make. Um, and so inviting, just reaching out, even if people say no, is probably the one of the most key things that we can do to gather Israel through our personal missionary efforts. Um, I think another one of the biggest things is to live the way you say you believe. Be an example because people notice. My grandparents joined the church because my grandpa worked with a man who lived his standards and my grandpa noticed a light about him. And when you live the way you say you believe, there's power behind that because the spirit testifies of truth. When you are true to your beliefs, the spirit testifies of that and other people notice. Um, and that includes not lowering standards and not being willing to compromise the things that you believe even in a world of changing values. Obviously, there are some modifications that need to happen with the home study church and social distancing right now. And there are some pretty big modifications, but we've seen that the work of God does not stop. The work of gathering Israel will not stop unless God says it's going to stop. And I think one of the best ways to keep people involved is to share what you're learning in your home studies. Share it on social media. Text a friend, be like, hey, we're actually doing church at home right now. This is what I learned today. You guys, so many people are missing church. They're missing being in that community. They're missing feeling that light and that joy. When you share with them the things that you're learning and that you're doing church at home, that's gonna pique their interest and they're gonna appreciate the fact that you even thought enough about them to be willing to share what you are learning. And you can invite people to study with you over video call. As missionaries, that's what we've been doing. We've been inviting people to study over mission, over, sorry, over video call. We've done Come Follow Me with the people we're teaching and with members. We've done Come Follow Me with people that aren't even in this state. Um, people miss church. And if they know you're doing church at home, they might want to participate. If they don't, that's okay too, but they would appreciate an invitation. I know that. We've done that with a lot of people and it's been so amazing to see. The Spirit still works through video call, you guys. I can promise you that it does. I know that it does. Um, and I wanted to share an experience that I had, like I said at the beginning. Um, one of my very best friends in high school, not a member of the church. Most of my other friends are members of the church. And so we invited TJ to a lot of things. We invited him to church. We invited him to mutual activities. We invited him to dances, to other activities. And most of the time, he said no. He worked on Sundays. He thought three-hour church was way too boring to sit through. He was working a lot. He was running. He was doing school. He said no pretty much almost every single time that I asked him, if I'm going to be honest. And the thing is, he knew that we all loved him no matter what. And because of that love, because he knew that we had a relationship, that we were already friends and that wasn't going to change, we kept inviting him because he knew it was coming from a place of love. And you guys, TJ is set to be baptized next weekend, a week from this from today so on August 1st TJ set to be baptized I know that is because the spirit prompted us to keep inviting TJ I know it's because he saw the way that we lived and he could feel the difference and I know it's because he knew that we loved him 
and I'm so excited for this and I know you guys can all have opportunities exactly like that. Hello Rockland Steak. Um, so first, how can we gather Israel through our personal missionary efforts? Um, so I just got back from my mission in Honduras and I've realized one thing about being here in the United States is that sharing the gospel is a little bit different than it was there. Um, not just because of the quarantine, but also because of I don't know, the customs and the culture here. Um, so mainly the interactions I've had with people have been with my family and also with people at, at, at work. And I've realized that it's kind of, it's harder to share the gospel with them because they ask us not really to, to share the gospel blatantly. But I realized the best way to um, be a missionary and to like share the gospel and to gather Israel is by being a great example. Um, because I know the things I've learned from the gospel have been because of the examples I've seen. And I know a lot of times, especially from what I learned in the mission, people who aren't members rarely notice the example of good members of the gospel. And it makes them want to follow that example. Um, another part of gathering Israel, I think, is is the retention. Because after gathering, you have to retain. Um, so I think just making sure to, to watch out for the new members of the church especially, and also old mem members who are struggling, sending them text messages, um, and, I don't know, raking their yard are, are really good things to be able to gather Israel. Um, and then how can we modify these efforts for home study and social distancing? So all this stuff is a little different now because of social distancing, obviously. Um, missionary work is a little bit harder now. But I do think that we all have um, interaction still, like even if it's just with our neighbors, if we see them in the driveway, or if it's at the store or at work, um, I think there's usually ways in which all of us still see people, um, even if it's just on social media. And again, I think that just by our example, the people are going to want to learn more about the church. Um, that's one thing that's been really nice, um, especially at work, is that even though I don't blatantly share the gospel, um, people have people know that I'm a member of the church and they'll ask me things um, because they have a desire to learn things. Um, I also think that one thing that's really important right now during um, the quarantine, a great way to gather Israel is family history. Because even though the people um, on the other side of the veil aren't aren't in this life right now, they're still part of Israel. And there's still people that we can help gather back. Um, and maybe, maybe an example I'd like to share um, of something I've kind of been doing or that I've kind of been feeling during the quarantine is that um, while I do kind of miss the the sort of um, the the easiness of the mission of just going out and to be able to help whoever. Um, I've kind of missed that being back home. But I realize whenever I feel those feelings, um, even though I can't exactly go out and just into the street and help people, I, I can do family history. So it's been really nice just whenever I feel that to be able to log on to family, uh, family history um, website and just look around for a few names or um, learn a bit more about my ancestors. Um, so I know it's hard, especially with the quarantine, but I know by our examples, we're going to be able to um, shape a lot of lives still. And by keeping in contact with our friends that aren't members of the church and sharing with them the, the, the things that are giving us hope right now, we're going to be able to give them hope too. And... Well, I bear my testimony of missionary work, and I do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some awesome examples of sharing the gospel during these times have actually come to us through referrals of your own missionaries in the, in the stake who are out and about and are posting a lot about the gospel and testifying of Jesus Christ on their social media accounts, and their friends are asking questions and saying they want to hear more and learn from the missionaries. So they're telling us that their friends in our area um, want to learn more, and we're teaching them. So don't be afraid to uh, share the good news, and you never know what kind of seed it could plant.
One of the best examples that I've seen of doing these um, oh, to come follow me curriculum inside your home is that you can actually invite people over Zoom to join you, whether it be like less actives or um, family members who haven't been in church in a while. Um, they'll want to talk to you. And so if you say, hey, we're doing like a little bit of a discussion about I don't know, the Book of Mormon this week. Um, care to join us? We'll have... <laughs> we'll be able to see your smiling faces and join in for something social. Um, it's, it's almost like a great excuse to do missionary work.